All right, so the entire, well, I guess greater than half of the United States right now is under some sort of cold freeze, uh, Arctic blizzard going on, the entire northern states. Uh, airlines are shutting down. Over 4,000 uh, flights so far have been completely canceled, not including over 10,000 delayed, or at least that is what the headlines are reading. To be fair, I did not read anything beyond that. I do believe that, that is a connection or um, a continuation of both uh, package travel as well as airline passenger travel. So, you know, like FedEx and UPS uh, shipping things, you know, for same day and overnight delivery type style, as well as just, you know, the hubs transport uh, transporting products, and then also just individuals flying during the Christmas and holiday season. So um, definitely a lot of people are likely pretty much ticked off about that. I know myself when I grew up in Ohio, uh, that was really just kind of a given that there was going to be terrible weather and cancellations, etc. And it just was not a good thing to do. Now I'm over here in sunny California, it's 80 degrees and sunny and I, um, I feel bad for everybody, but I've lived it for like three plus decades. So uh, I don't feel that bad. Um, I hope everybody does stay safe and have a wonderful Christmas time. This is going to be the last upload that I do make, at least that I think I'm going to be making throughout the 2022 year. I first off wanted to leave everybody and say I truly do appreciate each and every one of you for watching and sticking through this. I know that, um, you know, as I get more busy with other things, I post less and less videos. I've been doing a lot less live videos. Um, not because I'm not trading every day, not because I'm trying to keep anything a secret. I'm just, I, I really don't have that much time and I've been doing such hyper scalps. There's not really much value in the video. And so I didn't really want to waste anybody's time with just saying, Hey, look here, I scalped 20 cents off 500 shares. I put a hundred dollars in my pocket and walked away. So, uh, I really have just been really busy wrapping up other things with the business for the end of the year. Uh, I've been doing a lot of traveling in the last two weeks, going to be gone for the next week. And that is why I'm going to lead with the last video for the year. I might have a couple um, old videos that I've not gotten out that I may post just to kind of keep things moving. But as far as setting up for a watch list, this will be the last one I do make prior to the start of the new year in 2023. So once again, I just wanted to give my heartfelt warmest thank you to each and every one of you. I appreciate each and every one of you that have stuck with me and have been with me throughout this journey, as well as those who watch the videos in the sidelines, but don't subscribe, consider subscribing if you like this material and if not, and if you don't like the material, you know, let me know in the comments, what am I doing wrong? Like, what can I do to earn your subscription and earn your time? So, but uh, with all of that, Let's get started. What's going on everybody, Physio Trader here, and let's take a look at the market. So overall, um, I was present for just a little bit uh, today, but we've got the Charles Schwab, uh, Charles Schwab Street Smart Edge platform over here. The market is, uh, we do technically have after hours that goes on, I think until 8 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time, at which case the stock market will be closed on Monday in observation of Christmas Day observed, which Christmas Day is Sunday, but the markets uh, will observe that day and on the 26th will be closed. I do anticipate the market's going to be extremely choppy all next week, as many people, myself included, are going to be gone and not trading. Now, I might actually trade a couple times here or there. I'll still have my laptop. I'll be able to do everything, but uh, I'm not anticipating any major moves. Now, that could be both to the upside and to the downside. A lot of volatility in things like Tesla. Tesla is actually the highest volume traded today. You can see here 100 166 um, million shares traded. It is a far cry from the 210 million shares traded yesterday with Tesla. So um, it's still very high, but not as high as it was uh, actually looking at yesterday. Yesterday, yeah, 210. Uh, million shares traded today is a little bit less, but then again, um, I don't necessarily think that is because anything other than the fact that we are wrapping in to the end of the year. So I do anticipate a little bit of sideways action. I actually think we're going to get a little bounce in Tesla, although today we did have a bounce to around 128, a really fire rocket bounce that we did have that ended up uh, being ill-conceived and did not last very long. So let's uh, dive in. Continue over here on the weekly chart. We are just shredding off to no man's land at this point. Volume is increasing, which tells me that there are more sellers jumping into this. More people are selling. More people are closing out of their position. We are, however, going to be entering into some support areas. 127, we're breaking through-ish, um, but momentum is going to placate to that. I think 118, I said it yesterday, I think 118 is going to hold strong, but since I am trying to make a video a little bit longer time frame, given, a, let's say, a week to two week time frame instead of just a couple days, um, my shorter term period is around 108. 
I think 108, I think we have a high chance of hitting 118. We break through 118, I think we're going to go to 108 rather quickly. From 108, I think 102 is going to hold strong. I think 100, just that wholesome number of 100, is going to be a big in-your-face number. I think we're going to bounce off around 101, 102. Uh, I think we're going to slap up to one. 108, 114, and then we're going to roll back over. If we do break through the $100 mark, I think we're going to floss through down to like the 92 uh, mark. I do think that it is going to be quite challenging for us to get below the 92. Um, just saying from this marker right here, as you can see over here, I do think, and that's kind of where my eyeballs just automatically go, I do think that that is going to be a very, very, very strong in-your-face number as far as, you know, getting out of the way. I do believe strongly in Tesla. I'm a Tesla bull. Uh, I'm not saying I'm a bull this this millisecond, but long term, uh, you know, we're looking decade plus out. I do think there's a lot of uh, value in that. Now, there is a regression to the mean. So the idea is that we are going to be getting a little bit lower from there. So, but uh, breaking it down a little bit smaller trades, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on Tesla because most people are watching. And as you can see by the volume on this, um, it's not just me. Uh, over here, like I said, on the daily, we're just bleeding off. But to be honest, if you look at the, the, the weekly, look at these like extended looking bars here. Uh, I want to see this thing get extended. I want to see it get a little overextended, but on the daily, yes, it's selling off, but it's not selling off um, nearly as fast. Um, this, I don't see this as a softening. I see this as almost like a liquidation break and then, um, you know, just a, a little bit of consolidation. And then I think we're actually going to get a little bit more of a downside from the hour chart. I don't really care for it too much. I don't watch it. I actually watch the four hour or the 30 minute more often. Um, the 30 minutes going to work just fine with me from here. You know, like I've talked about yesterday in my video, it just sells off, goes sideways, sells off, a little bit of bounce, goes sideways, sells off big, sells off big, a little bit of a bounce, sells off. Had a little bit of a spike towards that 128. I think it was like 128.40 today. And within a matter of like 10 minutes, we lost like six of those dollars. Um, however, we are getting this trend line that it does look like an after hours is going to break to the downside. So again, not that wholesomely uh, in value of it, but I do want to make this very clear. I did add to a very small position. I picked up 100 shares of Tesla at 122.10. Uh, I picked it up on this morning. That would have been really nice to get lower at that. Like I think the low on the day was 121.10. Uh, 121.02. So it would have been nice to get in, you know, another dollar per share. But again, uh, this is a longer term trade. And so, but if this thing, and I told myself, you know, if this thing bounces within two weeks to 145 or higher, I'll probably just take the $2,000 and walk. Uh, but outside of that, no biggie. So, um, other than that, uh, I think that we are going to get a little bit more short term downside. I don't think there's going to be much of a reprieve. I think next week, um, it, there's going to be some more selling. I do think that things are going to sell off until roughly the January 12th CPI data. Um, uh, consumer spending came out today, PCE came out, and it's higher. You know, people are spending more again. And that, I think, is making a lot of people fearsome of that the Fed is going to have more ammunition to continue to clamber down and tighten things up. But I actually like them tightening things down. You know, yes, it makes the stock portfolio suck, um, but as long as you didn't over leverage at the top, uh, you really should just think about long term the benefits of this and the long term the benefits of increasing your buying power uh, with the strengthening of the dollar longer term. So just think every dollar you earn now is actually worth more than it was you know, a year ago because of that inflationary issues going on. So um, definitely some value in that. Uh, I know that doesn't feel good and it's all just work, but just remember, you know, the wealth, the real like familial generational wealth is built in this down bullshit market that's going on right now. You know, people in 2008, 2001, they hated the market. They absolutely hated it. You know, after the biggest high, you have the long, longest and loudest crash. So a lot of people are on this really aggressive hangover stage and they're feeling like we hit rock bottom. I don't think we've bottomed out, but I do think that uh, risk versus reward, I've said it yesterday and I'll reiterate this. Uh, Chamath Palihapitiya said that he thinks we are greater than, uh, we are closer to the end than we are at the beginning. I like that and I would have to concur with that. I do think that we are closer to the end than we are to the beginning. And again, to iterate to that and something I did say yesterday in the video, if you watch, sorry, I'll just repeat this real quick. We are closer to the end than we are at the beginning and to mimic what uh, Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan Chase is saying is that the first 50% sucked, the second 50% is going to be much worse. And so I think we're in the starting phase of the much worse. I do think that um, 
earnings recessions have not really been priced in as much as people think they have. I think there's more bloodshed to be coming on. Um, I would hate to say it and I hate to see it, but I think that there is about a 70% chance that Tesla is going to get as low as $64 per share, which would be another 50% drop from what it is right now. Um, I also, though, think that that is a pretty brutal drop. Um, and at that point, um, I think Tesla is going to, at some point in the future, the board is going to initiate a uh, stock buyback and they're going to, you know, lessen up those shares and they're going to, you know, cause a buying frenzy of Tesla shares. But I understand that they're going to wait and see how the recessionary crisis does play out. So again, so many things to battle on. Do I think we're there yet? No, I don't. Do I think that we have a chance of breaking through 100? Yes, I do. Um, does that mean I'm so afraid I don't want to get into any of this? No, it does not. I just told you I bought 100 shares today. Not a very large investment around $12,000, but I did take on 100 shares. And um, but I see this this sideways action today as a little bit of a, I, I don't want to say a softening. I just feel like the brakes are coming on. That doesn't mean that the that we're not going to go into some like strategic crash or anything that this isn't going to get much worse. But Elon Musk did tweet out that he is done selling for a minimum of two years. I don't think people really care as much as, you know, probably hoped. We had a little bit of a spike here or there, but I still think that we need a lot of institutional buying. The problem is, is that uh, right now, big money, Wall Street thinks that we are headed for a crash, but institutions, not institutional buyers, but institutions like the companies, the CEOs, are saying that you know they, they think the soft landing is very much so uh, not only on the table but they think that like the economy is too strong to even endure a soft landing that it's just going to be you know rainbows and kittens so definitely something that is a grappling and i think that's more of the kind of the, the fear the fud um, of the unknown of like hey you know these are two you know intelligent class individuals that are not singing the same song right now and i think a lot of people are worried about that so but moving on, TQs broke down to the $17 mark. I believe it got into the low 16s again. Um, I don't really want to say to just the 16. So I said on this on the weekly. At this one, I'm really basing this entire trade on the weekly. Uh, we've bounced off this. Um, the bounce was huge. Bounce. I think we're going to dribble on this, and then I think we're going to throw up. So uh, keeping it short and sweet, I really want to see this thing sub 14 to even consider starting to buy, and that is just because of these short-term um, support lines that I do think is going to hold more than people are tru truly given credit for. Uh, I mean, look at this hammer candle that started before the massive run-up right here, uh, and that is just going to be at that 1408. Uh, I'm not saying I would love to see it down to eight, but again, in order for this to get down to eight, I think there's going to be a lot, a lot, a lot more pain in the market. And to be quite honest, I don't want that for anybody. I don't want to see, you know, the market get that bad. But Apple is holding everything up really, really strongly. I've said it before. Apple is going to be the one to cause the actual market to crash because everything else has already been pierced off uh, so significantly. At this point, do I think that we have a high chance of getting up to this pink line? I do. Just remember, every day, every week, this pink line is going to go up and this line I do anticipate is going to go down. I think right around here is we are going to get ourselves some shorter term support. I think the 121 to one. 16 mark or i should say the 116 to 121 mark is going to be our support line and i do think that'll probably be where we do have a nice bounce point opportunity and when it starts to get to that level that to me is signifying a good opportunity to get involved and see from there uh nvidia uh we're getting a little bit of a hammer candle on the daily um again i still think that we have a little bit time to go i think this thing might give us another bounce towards the 160 and then eventually roll over i still think we have a chance a high chance of getting down to 130s Remember that most recent low that we had was 108, and many, many times people get into this and they think, oh man, I missed the bounce, and then it craters down. Oh man, I missed the bounce, and it craters down over here on the weekly. Oh man, I missed the bounce, and it's cratering down. We're in the process of it cratering down. I still think 120, right around here, 120 to 1010, this trend line, I do think that we are going to retest this, um, and that is something that I am very much so interested in being a part of. So... Uh, we'll see. Meta uh, is kind of actually holding a little bit more strength than I thought, which I guess is kudos to Meta. So 
I, you know, I said I wanted to short it. I never did because I did not get the move I wanted. Uh, eventually followed the exact trade plan I said. I said my price target was 109. It barely got to 108, and that was uh, what I would consider a successful trade. I told everybody about it daily on this channel. And so if you took it, kudos to you. Um, at this point, this thing is showing some support. I don't necessarily want to go long on it, but I do like the idea of this thing breaking 125. Don, do I think it's going to break 125 and go up to 160? I don't, but if it does, I'm going to be ready to short it because... This thing is still, the burn rate is entirely way, 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 way too high. And the current economic environment is still very, very poor and very shallow, in my opinion. Amazon got down to 84 today. Um, I actually shorted this bad boy perfectly today. Um, this was the trade I took um, that I really hate and I don't even like to discuss it because... So coming over here, we're getting a little bit of a bounce off this. I did not believe it on the daily. We were making that push towards this pink line, this down sloping eight period average over here on the daily. Um, we'll break down the, the day first, but essentially getting a nice little break on here. I did not buy it, so I wanted to short it. I do think that there is good, a, a good likelihood that we do retest this 95. The problem is I think if Amazon starts to make a push back towards 100, I think it's going to be a good... Um, a longer term buy. So, you know, down here, I still think it's cheap. I think it's a good idea to buy. Uh, if this thing goes sub $80, I'm interested. If this goes sub 60, then I'm definitely interested. I think that, you know, because we are so close to those COVID lows, um, I know people have different opinions about that and they think that it should go much lower. But again, you have to realize that at some point, the government is actually going to put that money printer right back on. When that happens, you're going to wish, you're going to be staring at that rear view mirror and saying, man, oh man, I wish I had the cojones to, to buy in and get a little. So I'm not saying throw your mortgage at it. I'm not saying throw money at it. You cannot afford to risk to lose. But definitely, you want to start pairing into things at least in the next couple months, at least by the next two quarters. I think by May, um, I think a lot of the market's going to price into the 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 uh, explosion of the market. So over here, the trade plan that I did make was based off the 15 minute. Uh, right over here, as soon as we broke this, I decided I wanted a short above the break of the all day highs, um, 8490, I waited until, and then I shorted it at 80, um, 85. I got in at 85, just 100 shares. I added more at 8420 or 8520. And then at 85, I think I shorted at the absolute top on this. 8528, I shorted at 8527. I was down seven, seven or 800 shares short on this. Um, I took it for not very far. Uh, I'll be honest, I'm not very far. I got a phone call and I meant to put in a stop. And instead of putting in a stop, I limited order. So I got a better fill than the stop would have gotten me. But I actually did watch it and I would have never been stopped out and it would have just kept falling and falling and falling. So that is 100% on me. The 700 shares, you know, I'm not saying I would have played it perfectly, but that was 100% on me looking at this uh, over here, like I said. And the crazy part was, is I actually like watched it perfectly and I wanted to see the break of this 8490. Uh, and this 8494 was just on the level twos was a really hard area to break. My my um, my purchase price was eighty five oh three, and again I thought I was a stop order and I was a limit, and because of that I bought to close limit and I did not get to ride any of this beautiful, beautiful um, collapse of this on the way down. Again, not saying it would have been perfect, but I at least give me credit. I was basing the entire trade off the fifteen minute, the two hundred period average. It bounced right off of it, absolutely gorgeous, and so definitely something to to you know discuss looking forward. I'm not too much of an, a moving average trader, but the, the market just looked a little overextended. It popped very, very quickly. I felt it was going to be short-lived. Um, again, if I had more conviction, I would have, you know, sized up uh, more than that. And, you know, to be fair, I had a ample time to to add to the short. Even when I started to close out, I, I had ample time to add to the short. So uh, I'm not blaming anyone but myself on that one. So but like I said, I wanted to break some of these down a little bit more in depth. Uh, Google I haven't really been watching lately. Um, I think FedEx is something I just wanted to look at. FedEx, I uh, wouldn't be surprised if they, uh, yeah. So I mean, FedEx actually, you know, looking really good actually. So a nice, beautiful opening. Now, of course, FedEx, they shut down their Memphis, Tennessee hub, which is their largest hub. Uh, basically, the, the idea is that every package has to go through there. They shut it down because of the bad weather we talked about at the beginning of this uh, video. Um, a lot of topping tails on this one, and then it is selling off, but it's still looking quite strong. The daily, nice little hammer candle coming in. Um, I actually think that this thing is going to rip and roar to the upside. I think a lot of the cyclicals are going to really benefit from this, um, you know, uh, this uh, deflationary environment. And I actually, 
Uh, I could be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. I'm actually I'm probably wrong more than I am right, to be honest. Um, but I actually think we're going to enter into, I don't want to say like, um, like a deflationary environment, but I do think that inflation is going to lessen once more on the January 12th uh, CPI release date. And I think a lot of eyes are really, really, really going to be focused on that. But the Federal Reserve says that, you know, one, um, one number CPI releases, uh, although welcomed, his words were, although they were welcomed, uh, it is not indicative that they are ready to slow down their rate hikes. But I think a January 12th uh, number being, again, a uh, beat to the downside, meaning that inflation is lower than expected, would be a wonderful um, two times a charm type style, um, two or three times a charm type uh, thing. So definitely something that I think a lot of people are looking forward to. Once again, I did want to thank you all. A warm welcome to anyone who's still here. Thank you so much. If you are not a subscriber, continue to consider being a subscriber. If you like these videos, you know, consider giving that thumbs up. And if you don't like these videos or you're not subscribing, you know, let me know down in the comment section, constructive feedback, criticism. I like it. I learn from it. I want to grow with it. Um, let me know what I can do to earn your subscription. And with all of that being said, I hope everybody has this fantastic and a healthy, you know, holiday break with family, friends, loved ones, and I will catch you all in 2023. Thanks, everyone.